Hello, my name is Tommy Murphy. I'm a professor at the University of Oconee, where I teach development, economic history, and macroeconomics. And today I'm here to tell you something about macroeconomics. Uh, so start thinking of the things that worries you, and start thinking some of them, some of them like, how you ever wonder why some countries are rich and others are poor? How come uh, the European uh, unemployment is so high? And how can we reduce that unemployment? Or why? Which kind of things explains fluctuations in prices? Well, macroeconomists have answers for many of these things. And by learning more about macroeconomics, you'll be able to think about these issues in a more uh, clear way. Macroeconomics is one subfield of economics. As you know, economics has to deal with the manage managing scarce resources. And uh, the whole field is divided into two subfields. One of them is called microeconomics, that deals normally with the interaction of firms and households and how they make decisions about production, uh, about different things in their lives. On the other hand, macroeconomics has to do with the larger spectrum, with the whole economy and how the whole economy moves and reacts to different uh, shocks and uh, different events. So, like economics, macroeconomics is a science. At least, economists like to think of it as a science. So, basically, they, they follow the scientific method. What does it mean? It means that you start from some observation, and with that observation, you build a theory, and you want to test that theory, whether the theory is good or not. And sometimes you need to get more data, and that's why you go and look for more information and observation. And then you build another theory, because perhaps the, that uh, observation tells you that your theory was not good enough. This process is called scientific scientific methods, and that's what economics and macroeconomics do. So in, uh, in particular, how do we do that? As you know, I mean, medical doctors and physicists build small models and they simplify the reality to some degree to be able to deal with these issues. Macroeconomics and macroeconomics do exactly the same. We build models and create assumptions that we can use later to think about reality in a more simplified way. Economists in general like to do that with equations or graphs. So here I'm going to tell you something about some graphs that could help you to understand these kind of things. So normally we start with these two uh, axes where we, we try to illustrate things in a particular uh, economy. So let's think that you have an economy and the whole economy is sit here in, in, these two, in these two axes. And let's think that this economy, and here is where I'm building all the assumptions I tell you, I'm, Assuming that in this economy there are only two things, let's say that this economy has only two things to produce. One is wheat and the others are cars. Okay? So the whole economy, the whole resources, all the capital, all the labor is distributed in these two things. If the economy produces only wheat, it will be able to produce this much wheat. Whereas if all the resources, all the labor, all the capital goes to producing cars, it will go to produce this amount of cars. Of course, the economy can produce some cars and some wheat. So this is where you find another equilibrium in this, this economy. All the resources are over there. As you can see, there are thousands of combinations that could be, could be working. And this is what all these dots represent. Different combinations on which the economy can produce, if they put all the resources and uh, at the particular use. Okay? This line okay, that collects all these points of production is called PPF, Production Possibility Frontier. And basically... Bocconi Virtual College. Enrolling the smartest high school student.